Dan, we talked a little bit earlier about some of the features that Apple announced. Specifically, talk to us a little more about that partnership with OpenAI and the implications of it and kind of how it's going to work. Yeah, so really what they're doing is they're going to be integrating uh, GPT technology, OpenAI technology into uh, iOS. So uh, you'll be able to do things like pull up Siri, ask for a question. You can choose if you want to have a GPT answer or a Siri answer. Now, Apple says that uh, all the uh, information, your data, all of that is going to uh, not go up to uh, uh, open AI, it's not going to be shared, it's not going to be used to train anything. Uh, and that really is something that's that's important. Uh, we saw uh, Sam Altman wandering around uh, ahead of the event. Uh, they didn't make too much fanfare uh, of the announcement. It was relatively small when you take into the, the totality uh, of what Apple announced here. But, uh, you know, the Apple intelligence platform is uh, seemingly a, a kind of you know, new way for Apple to move forward because it's going to be across all of these different platforms, which is iPhone, iPad, Mac. I uh, didn't say anything about uh, uh, Vision Pro yet or Watch OS uh, or, or Apple TV, uh, but the uh, the fact that it's going to be on iPhone, on iPad, and on Mac and talking across those is really important. And I think when you look at uh, the companies that are offering consumer level AI, that's Microsoft, Apple, and Google, Apple seems to have really started to come out on its own uh, ahead of the other two. Now, that being said, they were only just announced. We haven't used it yet. We haven't seen what kind of uh, hiccups there might be. You know, Google and Microsoft did announce their own AI products, and they had hiccups. In fact, Microsoft just had to pull back its recall feature, an AI-driven feature, uh, before they even released it because of some backlash about potential security issues. So this is a, a big move uh, for Apple. They're going to have to be uh, essentially uh, testing it. They're going to roll out the beta, uh, the private beta, and then the public beta, and then we'll see what kind of reactions uh, users give uh, towards that. But it's, it's interesting because they're also not just doing this using Apple software, they're also opening it up to third-party software. Uh, so you'll be able to do things uh, like ask uh, your phone to uh, take advantage of certain app features uh, or pull up information from certain apps. So it really is kind of an all-in approach for Apple here. And for a company that you know Wall Street's been waiting for two years to see what they were going to do with generative AI, uh, it really seems as though they've, they've delivered on what was expected, but nothing over and beyond that. And Dan, I'm interested too, what, you know, one theme today was privacy. Apple really emphasizing that, you know, not surprising that that's a core value in, in Cupertino. I'm just, I'm curious to get your take, Dan, on how much you think that resonates with consumers, how much that matters with consumers. But I think for, for most people, that's, you know, a, a big selling point for Apple. They push security as, as a selling point and privacy as a selling point for themselves all the time. Um, and I think that for, for the average consumer, when they think of generative AI, there's questions as to whether or not their data is going to be used uh, to train models or be sent back to uh, some large server where it's held onto indefinitely. Uh, Apple making sure to say, look, uh, we're going to send the bare minimum amount of data. It's going to go to special Apple servers running on Apple Silicon with all the kind of privacy you would expect. Uh, and then it's not going to be stored there. So that's an important differentiator for Apple that they're, they're trying to use. I think one of the other important differentiators to point out, and one of the things that they try to lay out at the top is that this is all going to be context sensitive to your information. Now, rather than a broad based kind of uh, GPT or, or uh, Microsoft, Google, this is all going to be based on your data. So when you pull stuff up on your phone, you're going to be looking for information from your apps. Uh, I used an example earlier about if you have to pick someone at the airport, uh, you could say, should I leave for the airport? Well, what time do I have to pick up mom or whatever? Uh, and it'll look through your content and tell you exactly what you need to know. And I think that's a key differentiator for Apple here. They're making it about security, as you, as you point out, and then about the context sensitivity here. That's something that I think is, is uh, really important and could be a major selling point for Apple, just making things a lot easier for consumers overall. Dan, finally, I want to ask you, I mean, you're immersed in tech. You use it a lot in your daily life. Um, what was the feature today that most wowed you that they introduced? Honestly, I, I think for myself, we want to see how this whole context sensitivity thing works, right? I mean, cool. I can rearrange the apps on my iPhone screen. All right, that's fun. Uh, the Gen Moji, the kind of AI um, emojis. All right, that's cool. You know, people like that. Uh, my brother loves it. Uh, but for, for me, it's going to be about how does this now pull information that I need up, like surfaces it properly for, for me. Um, I think, you know, for, for generative AI, for consumers, this is probably the way 
to go. Uh, being able to edit my photos, it's fun and all. Uh, being able to, you know, uh, edit some some audio, great, fun, uh, interesting ways to use this. But the 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 context sensitivity, pulling up content that I need, summarizing things for me in an easy to understand way. The the, the notifications feature that they announced, uh, the uh, the sensitivity for for notifications that you want, so I don't need to know that the Mets lost again before I get a text message from my wife. It'll stack them the right way. The more important one, my wife. The less important one, the Mets lost. Now, if the Mets win. They're more important, but they're not. So whatever. <laughs> but I think that's something that is that is very important, and something that I think overall is is going to be a selling point. Not just not just for me, yeah. but for most people. We just have to see if they can deliver exactly what they promised. And for Gen AI. It can be hit or miss so far. Yes, most definitely. Utility and execution. Those are going to be the two really determining factors here. Dan, thank you so much. Appreciate it.